right, all right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my dining room. Hopefully, the echo isn't too bad. <clears throat> We're going to give this here a couple minutes as people arrive. We got Q&A Friday today if you're just arriving. Um, Q&A Friday is one of my favorite days for Six Figure Live because it's just a chance to answer questions um, and to have a have a, uh, a dialogue with you guys. That's what I, I love about it. Angela, what is up? Welcome to episode 137 of Six Figure Live. Cheers to you guys. I'm going to give it a couple more minutes. Uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for showing up. Today's Q&A Friday. We've got a ton of questions we're going to be diving into. Um, I always prioritize live questions. We're going to get to that in a minute. So say hi as other people arrive here. It's going to buy you guys a little bit more time. I still see some uh, some numbers going up and some people dropping in. Peter, what's up, my man? Thanks for saying hi. It's always good to see you here, Peter. Um, it's, it really is, honestly. Angela, you as well. Uh, so say hi, you guys. If you're here, this is why I love live. It's because we literally get to have an exchange. Uh, so you can say hi. You can answer. You can ask any question you want. And I'll make sure to address it. We'll talk about it. Uh, Jeff says, we're back, baby. Yeah. What's up, man? Nate Cooper's in the house. Nate gave me a call earlier today. I answered the phone relatively disgruntled towards him. Tony, good to see you, my man. Always good to see you here as well. All right, you guys. We're going to jump right in as people arrive. Uh, here's the deal. Welcome to episode 137 of Six Figure Live. Hi, Jessica. Uh, today's Q&A Friday. Um, look... Uh, let's rewind for a hot second. A lot of you have heard me say this before, but uh, Six Figure Live, look, I do all kinds of things, right? I've got the podcast. Uh, I send out some dope-ass emails to you guys. I get a chance to go around and, and speak at various conferences. I hold my own workshop. Um, there's a few products that I do, but that's all well and good, and that's fun, and that's fine, but the thing that I love about Six Figure Live is I get to interact with you guys daily, every single weekday. I get to actually have a chance to hear hear from you guys, to respond to your voice, to respond to what's going on, uh, to give you guys feedback in real time. It gives me a chance to actually like listen. I know I do a lot of talking, but this is also where I do a lot of listening, and so um, that's one of the main purposes. The other, the other big thing is, um, look, it's, 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 I want to be that person for you guys who shows up for you, who shows up for your business and who helps give you that extra push, that extra motivation, that extra kick in the pants, right? Like I want to be able to be that person for you. Uh, some of you guys have those people in your life and you're fortunate, but for so many of us, we're not just photographers. We're not entrepreneurs. We're solopreneurs. We're doing this alone. And so I want to be able to come alongside you guys and help in any way that I can. And so that's why I show up every damn day. Uh, because we need it. I need it. And so there's that. Um, who else is here? Sharon's here. Good morning, girl. Mikel, Amy, good to see you guys. So here's the deal. It's uh, Q&A Friday. The way this works is uh, you guys ask questions and then I provide um, answers. I've already had... I, I have so many questions that have hit my inbox uh, prior to this, but I will always prioritize live questions. Okay, so if you're here and you're live, I'm going to reward you for showing up. Uh, and I'm going to answer your question before anybody else's. And so look, I love it when you send them to me. I love it when I get them in my inbox, uh, when I get them on, on Facebook messages and all that kind of stuff. It's great, but I'm always going to prioritize you guys. One of the reasons I love to prioritize you guys is because, again, I want to reward you for showing the F up. But two, I like to stay on my toes, right? And um, I try not, even when I get the questions in advance, I don't even really read them in advance. I just, I want to be on the fly with this. Um, so there we go. Uh, Maisha finally made it to Q&A live. What is going on? I'm so glad you made it here, girl. Christine, hi. Okay, we're going to jump right in. Uh, we've got a ton to get into. I'm going to start actually by addressing this real quick. Um, let me actually turn this around. Uh, I'm going to show you something. Look, um... I ask, I ask photographers, I've asked literally thousands of photographers what's their number one struggle, right? And I, the answers are, are um, it's all about, right, getting clients, um, knowing what to charge, expanding your worth, growing your business, all that kind of stuff. But also, one of the number one questions that I get asked about, which hit my inbox about 25 times this week alone, you guys, uh, with the number one struggle that I kept hearing over and over and over is I struggle to believe in my work, to actually charge what I'm worth. I struggle with confidence. I struggle with putting myself out there. What if I look stupid? What if I look dumb? What if people don't like my work? Um, it's, it's, they're so, um, it's, it's, I get it. We're artists and we're putting ourselves out there, but there's so much, um, wrestling with positivity and with confidence in our industry and in our space. 
Um, especially when it, maybe it's not even with your photography, but it's with your business. I struggle to have confidence in understanding how to grow my business, confidence in numbers and pricing and finances, confidence in knowing how do I actually get and acquire new clients. So, uh, so much of it comes back to confidence that I made a video this week. I worked my ass off actually, and I just put my brain to task and I just wrote down every possible, um, big idea, big picture belief that I have. Um, about confidence and and where I've obtained mine from. And then I also wrote down every single practical uh, kind of action step that I take every single day of my life. And I made a video for you guys. And that's going to go out. I'm sure it's going to go out this week. I'm, I'm doing up the finishing touches here, but let me actually pull this up. Give me one second. I'm going to turn my camera around. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit what this looks like here. Let's see. Wait for it. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, open this up. Okay. This is your little sneak peek uh, to the video. I'm going to make an entire post on this as well as a podcast episode. Okay, cool. Here we go. They don't deserve to be because, again, people are flawed. However, just wait for this, it. Let me... Why would you ask that other... Here we go. For, not for confidence sake, but confidence for survival sake. Why wouldn't you pick up the phone? Why wouldn't you close a sale? Why wouldn't you ask that other photographer to second shoot with them? Why don't you charge what you're worth? Why wouldn't you take this job more seriously? Why don't you put yourself out there? Why aren't you winning? Right? This is why confidence is important. And so as I, as I dive into this, I want to start with some big ideas, big picture ideas, and then I want to get really practical in terms of ways that you can both elevate your confidence, maintain your confidence, build back into your confidence. For starters, Woo. the big idea. <laughs> Let me pause this again. Okay, cool. So it's a big video for you guys, um, but it's dedicated to talk entirely about confidence, elevating your confidence, building it up. Um, if you if you struggle with that, maintaining it, all kinds of stuff. And I honestly, I cannot wait to put it out there for you guys. Um, and I want you guys to share it. This is not a video to keep to yourself. This is not something that you hold with scarcity mindset. This is something that you put out there into the world and you share with your peers, you share with your friends, your family. Um, they don't even have to be effing photographers. This is just stuff that like the world needs more positivity. The world needs to stop dwelling in and focusing in on all of our flaws, right? Um, and so I want you guys to push this thing out there as, as hard as you can. So anyhow, um, I'm excited to get that to you guys. I just finished the render and, um, and I'll get it uploaded here uh, soon and you'll have it. Okay, let's jump right in. Q&A Friday, let's do this thing. Peter says, between three photographers, how do you decide who gets which lead? Peter's referring to the fact that at Style Story Creative, they are three head photographers. Between each three of us, who actually gets the lead, right? This is like if you have a studio, who, who acquires it? I'm not going to spend too much time here, Peter, because it's, it's not as helpful for other people who don't have this model. Um, and so I'll be brief here, but for starters, we analyze who's available, uh, right? Who has the date? Uh, let's say that two of us have the date. Then we're going to look at the month. Let's say I'm shooting three weddings already that month, and the other dude uh, only has one wedding. Well, maybe we'll move it towards him. Um, other than that, we do our research. We're going to look into these leads before we pick up the phone and we call. And so I'm going to find out, did this come from a referral from a past wedding that maybe I photographed? Well, then I'm going to spearhead that and I'm going to own that lead. Um, maybe we look them up on Facebook and I recognize the fact that I've got 15 friends in common where somebody, one of our other head photographers has zero, then I'm going to spearhead it. And so it's just, I mean, man, Peter, it's just common sense. Really. We just kind of analyze it. And if all factors are equal, then it's just like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, hey, Ashley, what's up? Eric Scott says, so on the engagement giveaway, what do we actually give the winners? You give them an engagement shoot, Eric. Read the email. <laughs> Read it. It's all laid out for you, man. Uh, Sarah says, hey, Ben, have you seen the new soft cover signature albums from Miller's? I think my clients might really like that option. Hey, Sarah, I've not seen that in person. Um, I've seen their linen covers and their leather, cover, leather covers, but I'm not quite sure about the soft cover signature albums. And so I'm going to need to uh, dig into that. So thanks for bringing that to my attention, Sarah. I appreciate it. Um, I've, I got to order more sample albums. Um, okay, cool. Let's keep going. Maisha says, for the maximized workflow, at what point do you send the album incentive? Maisha. So by the way, quick side note, there's a lot of people who are asking some questions here that are getting really specific into booked. I just released this whole course 
on how we book clients, how, how we attract leads really, um, uh, like massively, like in the 700s plus a year, right? The ent- every single step that we take to bring in new leads. And so, um, so you guys, uh, for those of you who are asking questions, Um, I'm going to be pretty brief here with some of these answers because not everyone has booked, not everyone understands the context to the question you're asking. And so what I'd encourage you to do is also ask it in the mastermind group, uh, that you have access to with booked. But anyhow, I'll go ahead and I'll answer your question here, Maisha. Um, at what point do we send that? Um, I'd have to pull up the exact timeline for it, but it's usually uh, going to be right at about that halfway point between the time that they book and their wedding. And so everyone, it's different, but it's built into our, our CRM, our relationship management software, uh, to recognize the halfway point. So let's put it at a year. Let's say that they book and their wedding's a year out. It's going to be right at about that six-month point. It's always going to be after the engagement session. It's also going to be after um, we're going to be uh, showering our clients with gifts. So it's going to be after a halfway gift that we that we have sent them. And so it'll be probably maybe about five months before their wedding or so if they book a year out. Great question. Hey, Rachel. Rachel's here. Jennifer says, hey, Ben, I got to leave early, so I'll watch the replay. Awesome. But my question is, did you finish the video you were doing with Fundy? If yes, where can we find it? Jennifer, really great question. For those of you who do not know, I traveled to Paris with Fundy, shooting a documentary on the power and the importance of print. I followed Andrew Funderburg, who's the um, uh, uh, president of Fundy Software, uh, on a journey to, um, to follow this print that he found of his great, great uncle. It's a really cool uh, story, um, and so I got to, I got the chance to film it, and it was it was it was awesome. So uh, Jennifer, the video um, is in the editor's hands. He's doing the finishing touches on it. I believe it's probably actually on the uh, at this point just towards the final producing. And so I'll have to reach out. I'll have to reach out to Fundy and see what they're up to with it, um, and find out a launch date. So great question. Uh, Jeff says, last year I averaged only $1,300 per wedding. So far this year, I'm up to $2,400 per average um, or per wedding. Need to keep uh, need to keep going up, but it's going in the right direction. Jeff, it's the, I love it. I love it. I love the fact that it wasn't a question. It was just like a, a success story. Dude, so cool, man. I'm, I'm excited for you, dude. Keep doing what you're doing. Angela says this, I've just started including albums for every, uh, for every wedding client this year. I'm wanting to offer some sort of incentive or something for all my past clients to get an album now. I get it. Any ideas uh, of how to approach past clients about investing in an album? Angela, it's a really good question. So essentially, you guys, uh, just to restate it, she wasn't offering albums in the past. Now she's, Angela's begun to, to really believe in the importance of print for all clients. And so every single future client moving forward now gets an album included in their wedding collection. She now wants to go back, though, and make sure that her past clients have albums. And so what's a way to do that? Um, you know, there's a couple of thoughts. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen photographers do this different ways uh, to to various degrees of success um, because I think your heart's in the right place, Angela. I know you and I know your heart's in the right place and I don't, I don't believe this is all about dollars, dollars, dollars and bling, 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 right? Um, and so just under wanting your clients to actually have albums, I think to incentivize it, I think you kind of have to own that. I think you should probably even, um, well, for starters, you should pick up the phone. You shouldn't just uh, to email out your couple, right? I don't think you should email them and say like, hey, um, I know she didn't get an album from your collection. We've started to offer them and I wanted to give you an opportunity to buy an album. I don't think you should do that right? I think you should actually pick up the phone and say, hey, Sarah, how are you? This is Angela. Uh, how are you doing? How's, how's everything going, right? Catch up and explain, look, um, when we photographed your wedding, we weren't doing albums. And now um, I've been uh, seeing how important having an album is. I have, I, I've since then bought albums for my own family. I make sure that every single client has an album now moving forward. And I actually just been feeling really bad about it. <laughs> like I've actually been wrestling with the fact that I gave you all these digital files, but I want you to have something real. So for starters, have you made anything real? Ask them that question. This would be a great case study. Have you made anything actually to print from your wedding pictures that I gave you? Have you put things on the wall? Have you made your own album? And if they say, yeah, I've made your own, they've made your own, or you've made their own album, then cool. That's awesome. Um, if they haven't, then it's your opportunity to say, I want to be able to provide that service to you. I don't want to be able to actually go back because I, I feel like I did you a disservice by not, um, 
There we go. Sorry, my wife was calling me. She interrupted my live videos, Leslie. Um, and so if she calls again, though, I'm just going to hang up because my guess is she needs something. So just a warning for you guys. Anyhow, um, and at that point, I think you should offer some sort of incentive. I think you should go back and say, like, look, I want to make this uh, a no-brainer for you. I want to be able to give you. And then, like, I don't know. You'd have to run the numbers, Angel. I don't know who you use. I don't know what the process is. But I wouldn't do, I wouldn't try to make this something that's going to be like a, you know, a 90% profit margin. I think you do something where you are, your time is valued and you get paid for your time and obviously for the cost of goods sold. Um, but this might be looking more like a 50% um, profit margin or something like that. Um, and so I think you offer them, hey, I want to give you X amount off. So, but I'd pick up the phone and I'd listen and I'd ask the question, have you actually made prints? Do you have an album? Have you put things on your wall? Because now I'm understanding how important this is. I feel terrible that we didn't provide that for you. And I want to give you that quick story, you guys. I need you guys to listen the F up right now. I, my sister-in-law just had a newborn baby girl, okay? Uh, my sister-in-law had a newborn baby girl newborn baby daughter and had photographs taken of her daughter and photographs taken of the family, right? And dial in on this because I'm about to have twins, okay? And this is gonna happen for you too, but, but get this. She had these pictures taken, beautiful pictures, sent them out to me, gorgeous pictures. And guess what happened? The photographer gave her a Dropbox folder of the images. And now my sister-in-law is like, I need prints, I need an album, I need canvases. You guys, she calls me up. Get this inside your head. You are not serving your clients. You are, don't position this as like, well, we're a service industry. This is a service and so we only do the digital delivery because I wanna serve my clients. That's bullshit. My sister-in-law calls me up and says, I need to get fucking canvases. I need prints, I need wall art. Like, help me out. She's gonna spend, thou you guys, she's gonna spend thousands of dollars making, making things that the photographer, A, just threw away the income she threw it away, but B, she did the, her, her client a disservice by just being like, here's the Dropbox folder because now my sister-in-law is calling me up and I'm making all the prints. That's the best ticket in the world, right? I'll do that all day long. You guys keep just sending up the Dropbox link. You keep showing them the past gallery, the Pixie Set gallery, and I'll keep showing up. And when they call me up and they say, look, my photographer, they, they didn't offer prints, they didn't offer these things, um, I'll, I'll just skip ahead and I'll go ahead and I'll provide it for everyone. Um, so keep doing it. Uh, it just, it, it drew, uh, I just, it drove me insane. It drove me insane. Um, anyhow, side note, by the way, in case any of you guys are wondering, I'm doing it all at cost. I'm not charging my sister for this, but she is, she's, it's going to be deep. Uh, they missed out big time. They, they missed out. They missed out so big. I literally want to send them like a, an anonymous message be like, hey, just so you know, uh, you could have uh, made your year. Uh, okay, cool. Let's keep going. Uh, let's see. Albert says, how do you reject a client with class? Albert, understand this. When you reject a client, it's going to cause a, like it's going to cause unrest. You can't reject a client and have them walk away with a smile on their face. Rejection is rejection is rejection. You get that, right? There's no way to do this without completely avoiding discomfort and avoiding um, the fact that they're rejected. They're rejected. It is what it is. And so there's no magic words. There's no script. There's nothing that you're going to be able to do or say that's going to make, make this experience um, a positive one. Really, this is not. And so there's things that you can do, but understand this, you're rejecting them. And so the only, by the way, the only thing that you can do that's gonna make it like just completely gleam by is to lie. And that's to say, oh, bummer, it looks like we got booked. Uh, you know, sorry, we got booked, right? That's as, that's as good as it gets, but that's a lie. So then, you know, then you got ethics to deal with. And so if you're gonna reject someone, if you meet with someone and you're just like, this is just not lining up, I think that you have to, if you're gonna reject them, you have to provide them a solution. Right, you can't just say, sorry, I don't like you, we're out. You have to say, um, as we've gotten a chance to connect and meet and hear more about your wedding, I think that there's actually someone that's gonna do a better job than I am, right? And I think you own that. I think you say, look, I, I, I understand everything that you want, um, but I don't think it's in line, actually. I think there's someone who's gonna do it better than me. There's this photographer, and they're way more, they're, they're way better at um, detail shots, and they're way better at the more traditional shots, the portraiture that you want. They're way better uh, at whatever it may be, but just, I think you then you need to say, look, someone's gonna be able to do the job better. But even when you do that, Albert, even when you do that, they're still gonna get rubbed the wrong way. They're still gonna feel like, 
I but what you're saying you're saying no like it's it's is it yeah, is what it is. Okay, Peter says, what kind of images have your clients most resonated with? Family photos, getting ready photos, first look photos. Peter, none of that. Doesn't matter the time. Doesn't matter. It could be in the morning. Could be in the evening. Could be. Could be the engagement. Could be any time of the day. Um, as long as there's humanity in the picture, the pictures that my clients most resonate with. Um, are the ones that actually show humanity in them, that have a story to be told. It's not the ones where I put the girl in the perfect lighting and I say, bring your chin this way and we'll short lighter and then we'll twist her little tiny ass waist. And we'll like, it's just not that. They're gorgeous, she loves them, eats it up, but it's not the picture that gets framed and, and a deep mad and all that kind of stuff that doesn't happen, right? It might get put in a little like, uh, it'll be a spread, like or a, a page in the book, but it's not It's not gonna be the one that gets framed and matted, okay? It's the one that shows humanity, it's the one that shows, um, it tells a story, it like connects on an emotional level, so that's it, man. Angel says, super helpful, thank you, awesome. Scott's here, Chelsea's here, Luke's here, what's up, Luke? Uh, Scott says this, I've started sending a thank you gift after my pre-consultation phone call with potential clients. What info do you send with the gift about your company? Scott, what info do you send with the gift about your company? None. I mean, like my logo is somewhere on it. Maybe my logo is on a stamp or on a sticker or on the back. But usually, like they just know it's me because I signed my name and we're, we're meeting on that type of level. So Scott, when you go to send a thank you note, just like maybe it just has your logo on it or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's just like some just straight up stationary you got at like Home Goods. And you just say, thanks so much for spending time um, talking about your wedding photography and caring enough about your memories uh, to block off that time. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, I'm excited to get a chance to connect more and, and potentially be the one to tell your story. Scott, it's like a no-brainer. It doesn't, like, you don't have to be everything super, super branded, okay? So, awesome. Scott says, sending a gift in a letter. Albert, awesome. Awesome. Ryder, hey, what's up? Uh, Maisha says, what's the next, when's the next abundance workshop? Whew, Maisha, uh, the next abundance workshop, look, this year's gonna get a little crazy because I'm about to have twin boys in April. And so I was gonna aim for the very first of April uh, to, to bring 12 photographers over to my house for three days. It's actually like three and a half full days, like from like 9 a.m. to about midnight. We just go hard uh, and, um, and change lives. But I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. And then this wrestling match, Maisha, wrestling match, uh, Maisha, because I don't know if I can pull it off uh, in in that amount of time. Get everything uh, set up and ready to go to launch it by April first. So we'll see. Uh, but I'm going to try to aim for early April. Um, other than that, it would it'll it, if it doesn't happen before the twins come, it, we're going to have to push back to December, and then I aim for probably around the first uh, first week of December. Jason says, almost done watching Book 2.0. Awesome stuff. Need to watch it like five more times now. <laughs> Jason, that's awesome, man. Uh, glad. Uh, glad. Dude, thanks for all the, the Instagram messages, Jason, as well. Episode 137. Susan, hot damn. Keep it going. Thanks, girl. I appreciate your encouragement. Peter says, what all happens at a reveal date? Um, what Peter's referring to here is... Um, when it's time for clients to get their pictures, let's rewind one more time to my sister-in-law and it was time for her to receive her pictures. Guess what happened? Guess where she received those pictures at? Guess where she got that mother effing Dropbox link, right? She got the Dropbox link as like one of her kids is, is crying in the car. She's trying to load the other one up and she gets a ding on her phone and she got a Dropbox link. Okay. So when what Peter's talking about is we don't do that. We do an actual premiere, a presentation live. I wanna be present with my clients. I wanna be present with the people that I photograph uh, when I present their images to them. I do this for a couple reasons. One is just straight up selfish. Like I actually wanna see the emotion. I wanna see the joy in their face. I wanna see tears. I wanna see laughter. I wanna be a part of that because it makes what I do worthwhile, right? When all you're doing is showing up and you're clicking a shutter and you're spending every weekend 16 hour days on a Saturday grueling and then you get to your laptop and you're just effing editing things all day, you're gonna get burnt out and you're gonna be like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? It's not until you actually get to see the result and see the experience, see the emotional connection that people have to what you're creating that you're like, that's why I'm doing this. Okay. So number two, the second reason why is I want my clients to be put into the right context to best remember and experience their day. And so when I say the best context, I'm talking about like all five senses, sight, sound, taste, smell, what I forget, touch, right? 
When they come into the space, I want all to be working together and for them uh, to be able to fully enjoy and immerse themselves in those memories, okay? So let me go back to the question Peter says, what all happens at a reveal date? Uh, oh man, this is, this is like, dude, premiere, Peter, uh, this is like a, usually they're like three hours long. For me to, I'll like try to bullet point it real, real quick here. Um, client comes in. We do um, a, uh, there's a gift of a physical print. We do a quick little mini slideshow of images. We look through it. The very first time they really see things is in a narrative format as a pre-designed album layout. So they're seeing not individual pictures, but they're seeing narrative storytelling of the day. Um, then we go through and we start narrowing that, um, that layout down and we finesse the album to be its final form. And then we order the album that night and then we send them over their full gallery of everything else. Um, we usually get a little tipsy. Um, what else? I'm trying, I don't know, man. I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, Misha, thanks for your understanding, girl. Um, I, as soon as I figure out dates, I'll let you know. Uh, Tammy says, hey, Ben. Uh, hi, Tammy. Do you post any sneak peeks on social media before the reveal? Great question, Tammy. We post, uh, post one image on social before the client comes in to see and receive those images live, right? So we're going to post one image on social uh, before they come in. Nate says, uh, sharing Lag Lagavulin and champagne is another great perk at the Hartley Reveal. Yeah. Nate's one of my grooms, actually. And um, and uh, he's also an entrepreneur as well. But uh, yeah, we definitely had some Lagavulin. Uh, that was fantastic. Nate, by the way, thank you for the Lagavulin. Uh, so you guys, by the way, if, uh, if you're a scotch drinker and you're trying to figure out what bottle of scotch you should get next, I want to encourage you to go ahead and make the investment into a Lagavulin 16. It's a great decision. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Okay. Thank you guys for the live questions. I'm sure more are going to come through. I'm going to hop into some of the other ones that I've received um, in the inbox. And uh, let's keep going. Angela says, do you blog the wedding after the reveal? Angela, yes. Uh, we create a draft of the, of the wedding um, well before the reveal. And then the day after, or you could do it on the day, you uh, just post live on that blog post. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Let's go. Lauren says this. Um, I went from booking 24 weddings a year to booking two weddings. Or I went from booking 24 weddings last year to two weddings in 2017. There's a lot of time left in 2017. Aside from deciding to have another child, I have no clue what has happened, but something has gone wrong. Uh, what am I not doing right? Man. There's so many, okay, so there's so many variables. For starters, so um, uh, Lauren had messaged me, said that she booked 24 weddings last year. Now she only has two. Um, she's had a child now and just things aren't, aren't cooking. So Angela, or sorry, Lauren, I've got a couple of thoughts here. There could be any number of variables, really any number of variables. But one of the first things that you should be able to do uh, and that you should do is this. I actually want to encourage you to go and, and purchase this book, make an investment. It's like 10 bucks. It's a 15 minute read. It's called Who Moved My Cheese? Who moved my cheese, okay? It's a nice little allegory. I want you to go and read this. It'll take you about 15 minutes to read it. Um, and it's all about how we adapt to change and how we um, deal with change and how we embrace change. And this is so important as a business because our, uh, especially for photographers, solopreneurs, our life is directly tied to and affects our business. As, a, as our life changes and evolves, for example, having a kid, it's going to change and evolve your business in ways that you might not um, be aware of until you really start to invest time into to thinking about this. So read that book. And then I want you to start jotting down and really investing time into what has changed. I understand that you had a kid, but then what is that? What else has changed? Look at what happened in 2017 and how you got there and what is different today. What's different today that's not true of 2016. By the way, you have to look at 2016. I'm sorry. Uh, you have to look at 2015. If you booked 24 weddings for 2016, that happened in 2015, right? You get that, right? So look at the year 2015. What was going on then that stopped occurring in 2016? Because that's where you need to look when you're looking at why 2017 is not booked up, okay? So what occurred then that's not occurring now? But first read the book because I think it's going to open your mind and your heart to accepting uh, the fact that 
there has been changes in your life and you need to evaluate what those are and then really kind of start nailing things down what shifted because your solution's there. I don't know what the solution is, but your, the, the answer to your problem is there. That's why. Because it's not it, – I really doubt it. That I don't think that, well, it's because the market shifted. Well, it's because three new photographers moved to my area. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. I think there's there's other things that have happened and other things that have changed uh, that you need to really dig into. Okay, cool. Thanks, Lauren, uh, for shooting me the question. Um, let's see. Sharon says, are you using studio management software like Simpton Hat, Shoot Q, Shoot Flow, Tave, etc.? Sharon, I am. By the way, side note, I have used Shoot Q. I have used Shoot Flow. I have used Tave. Um, and Tave is where we're currently at. Um, I'm interested in 17 hats, but I think Tave still has more advanced features uh, in terms of what it can do. I think Tave is the most full functioning CRM software in terms of customization to whatever your studio needs. Meaning if you're just one person, then you're good. If you're a florist, then you're good. You don't have to be a photographer to use Tave. Uh, if you have a, a full studio, then you're good. Tave is where we're currently at. Ryan, what's up? Jason Bosco's here too. Okay, we got more questions. Let's keep going. Kelly says this, my biggest challenge is the setup and keeping up with licensing LLC and doing the correct taxes. Kelly, don't. That's the, that's just the, that's the straight up answer. Kelly, if you're making money in your business, then don't effing do any of that. Go hire an accountant. Go work with someone. Okay? Don't do that. Don't set up your LLC. Don't file your own taxes. If you're making money, there's no reason you should be doing that. Honestly, you're probably wasting money. Like by, and it, I think as photographers, we're so sometimes budget tight when we first start. We're like, ah, but it's a hundred dollars. Ah, but it's three hundred dollars. The amount of money that you'll actually save because that person knows what the hell they're doing and is actually able to find write-offs that you aren't even aware of. Um, not not to mention the time it's going to take. But even if we're um, separating the ROI of your time, you have it's really hard. Like, what's the return on investment of me not being stressed the f out? Right? What's the ROI of that? What's the ROI of me being able to receive an IRS notice in the mail and just effing take out my phone, snap a picture of it, and text it to my accountant? What's the ROI of that? Because uh, I think it's pretty immense. I love the fact that I never have to be stressed when dealing with anything with accounting. Right? And so that's my answer, Kelly. Um, I. Yeah, that's what you should be doing. Um, okay, cool. Hey, Ryan Gandy's here, and I actually got a message from Ryan Gandy's friend. Uh, so this is what he said. <laughs> this kid's crazy. This kid's 21 years old, messages me. He says, I own three, I'm 21 years old. I own three businesses currently, and no surprise, I am stretched too thin. Uh, I'm using these funds to support the family while photography, 100% of it's going back into photography. Um, what else does he say? My fiance and I are growing the company quite quickly. We've shot a, we haven't shot a wedding yet. And yet we have, eight, we've got eight booked for 2017. Um, st I think actually, I don't even think this is a question. I just think he's telling me what's going on. Uh, no, that's no, there's no question. He's just like, let me know. Uh, maybe the question is he stretched too thin. Look, um, uh, Ryan's friend. Um, yeah, this is Bryson. So uh, Bryson, you're stretched too thin. You're, uh, look, I, I've been there. I do this, right? So right now I run, I think three or four different, but see, I don't even know how many businesses I run. That's when you know you're stretched too thin. Um, but I look, so, uh, Bryson, either you do, you have, you got two solutions here. Really three. The worst solution, obviously, is you burn out and then one fails. The second solution is you start um, outsourcing and really doubling down on outsourcing, uh, hiring out contractors to help run your other businesses. Or three, you just need to cut it. I think you need to cut something. I think you need to evaluate what has the greatest return uh, for you guys um, and cut it. But I, don't, I mean, there's got automate, 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 automate. Like I got a photo booth company and I don't touch it. I don't touch it. I automate it. And no, I don't make as much money off of it because I just automate it and then I don't have to worry about it. You need to start automating, my man. Uh, get systems in place. CRM, get Tave going for you guys. Um, automate. Okay, cool. Hey, my dad's watching. What's up, dad? Uh, Jamie says, I always learn so much from you. Hey, thanks, Jamie. I appreciate your encouragement. Um, seriously, you guys, your gratitude means the world to me. Um, Jimmy says, account all the way. Save so much stress. Amen. Let's keep going. Uh, Kyle and Kimberly sent me an email and they said, Ben, leads continually go to another photographer, 
right? Even after I thought, <laughs> even after I thought I met with them and I had great results, they keep going to other people. Um, and so I'm trying to up my game to figure out what we need to do to stand out more. So this is what's occurring. And you guys have experienced this. I know you have, right? You go and you have a, you get an email from someone. Hey, I'm interested in your service. You get on the phone. They say, I'm interested. You even meet with them and then they go and they hire somebody else. Um, and so trying to figure out what we need to do to stand out more. Um, maybe in this situation, it's just like straight up leads. Like they're not even reaching out. I think there's a couple things that, uh, you can do to stand out more to separate yourself from every other photographer in your area. Let's kind of talk, um, from the furthest point out and then we'll move in. When I say the furthest point out, I'm trying to figure out a better way to describe it. But the furthest point out is from the point that, uh, that a lead, would actually experience your brand for the very first time. So like on your website, right? You've got no ability to actually say anything directly to them. They have not emailed you. They've simply landed on your website. How do you separate yourself on your website from everybody else, right? I think you do this in, uh, I think there's probably three really big ways. Number one is in your copywriting. Too many photographers undervalue words. You land on a photographer's site and it's just like, boom, all picture, full screen picture. Big old picture of a bride, right? Just like picture, picture, picture. Uh, and, and when you do that, all you're doing is, is um, simply forcing your leads to judge you 100% based off of your image quality, which you and I both know the service that you provide is more than just your image quality. And so uh, one of the ways you could separate yourself is by really thinking about your copywriting. I have a whole podcast that I interviewed a, a creative copywriter. You should go listen to it. Um, Kimberly Houston. Uh, I believe it's episode three of the Six Figure Photography Podcast. Um, I forget. I have to go double check. So that's one of the things. The second thing is uh, you should be leveraging testimonials more often on your website. Okay. And so when a client lands on your site, they should be met with um, with words uh, of, of affirmation or with words that are a testimonies with, um, with context, with authority that, that separates you, that validates you. One of the number one things that people use when they're choosing a product or a service to buy is they want social proof. They want to know that somebody else has invested the 5k up front, that somebody else already spent three grand, uh, with you, Kyle, with you, Kimberly, right? And it was worth it. They want to know, especially when you start getting to these larger tier, uh, dollar amounts. And so, uh, I think you can help to to uh, to validate that through through genuine testimonies. Uh, the second thing uh, you guys hear me talk about this all the time. If you want to separate yourself from every other schmuck photographer out there, and I say that word intentionally because the photographers who simply email when a lead comes in, I'm sorry, but I have automatically categorized you into the into the term schmuck photographer. I've just decided that right now. If you're simply emailing your leads, if you're simply emailing people who contact you about your service, then I put you into the category of schmuck photographer. If you want to separate yourself from all the other schmucks, then you should pick up the phone and you should start caring. You should start like talking to your to your leads and asking them questions and being interested in them up front before you start trying to be interesting and start throwing all of your services and this is what you do and this is why you're unique and this is why you're great and this is why they should hire you. You have to actually give a shit about people, right? You do, like your passion, your joy, like your, your honest love for what you do will actually be able to be expressed when you get to use your voice, right? Dude, uh, here's the deal. When you want a bride to hire you to photograph the most important day of her life, to tell her story, not just for her, but to capture her memories for her generation, for, for her future generations, even to last beyond when she's gone, you realize that that requires far greater personal finesse than an email. If you want to spend, have a, have a client spend 10, like people wonder, Ben, how do you get leads to spend $10,000? How do you get someone to spend $5,000? Whatever that number is for you, $3,000. Do you realize that it requires far greater personal finesse to have someone invest $4,000, $5,000, $7,000 with you than to shooting off an effing email? So if you want to separate yourself, uh, Kyle, Kimberly, that'd be the next way to do it. Okay, cool. Uh, third way uh, is stop prioritizing your artistic desires and start focusing on giving the client back what they actually give a shit about. Stop trying to be and lead the whole day as like this avant-garde, I'm the creative, I'm the artist, do this, go here, I'm gonna light this whole thing into this crazy ass way, and then they don't really give a shit about it. You you like uh, fulfilled your own need, good for you, um, but it's not going on their wall, and it's not going in their book, and they're not gonna share it with their, with their family, right? And like, do that every now and then, but understand this, we actually have to give our clients um, the things that they value. We have to tell their story, and 
And so um, to show up and uh, to give a damn. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you actually understand and if you listen and if you ask questions. Hey, Diana's here. Diana says, hey, Ben, do you use Calendly? If so, at what point do you send them the link to schedule a consultation? Uh, uh, Diana, I do use Calendly, but right now I actually don't use it for our photography leads. For those of you who don't know what Calendly is, it's an amazing app that allows you to uh, to create time slots that people can sign up for. A really great and practical use of this is, let's say you're going to do mini sessions, right? Let's say you're going to set aside, it's Valentine's weekend, and you're going to set aside Saturday and Sunday, and you're going to do half hour blocks that um, that clients can come into, and you'll do a half hour little shoot with them, right? You could set this up on Calendly where they would actually just get a link and they'll see what slots are, are available automatically and then they just book a slot and then it books it on your calendar and when someone goes to that link, they'll see that that slot is gone. And so it automates the scheduling process with people. I use it with the podcast, right? So whenever I'm gonna interview someone on the Six Figure Photography Podcast, I send them a link to my Calendly calendar uh, and then they just choose a slot that they want. And so uh, Diana, right now, uh, we don't do that. Everything that we do has a little bit more personal touch to it in regards to work we're, we're already talking with people on the phone um, and so there's a little bit more of, of with with our brand more of that personal touch uh, and I think we're gonna keep it that way once again it just makes sense for us because uh, we're not selling um, you know a, a $200 photo shoot we're really connecting on uh, a full experience that's a it's a huge investment from them and so I really want to be able to hold their hand ac across that that time of scheduling and so we don't use it with our wedding brand but I see great value to use it for portraiture I see great value to use it with your team honestly with your friends with your family um, uh, all, other kinds of things uh, Eric says Millennials do not like to talk on the phone um, Eric that sounds like yeah. <laughs> it sounds like complaining to me, Eric. And I think that's, I think that, well, I think there's, um, there's something to be said about that. I think that, Eric, you're sorely mistaken because you have to understand that when a, get this, get this, Eric, when a bride, look, effing, under, okay, if, if you just call people just to like chit chat, yeah, people don't want to talk on the phone, right? But like when a bride wants to know um, and, and is really excited about your service and really wants you to be her photographer, she wants to actually connect with you um, and you actually step up to the plate and prove that. Like she wants information. It's like when I... Um, uh, uh, like actually right now, I want to get my lawn aerated. It's like the stage I'm at in life. I want to aerate my lawn and I've got questions and I'm looking on the website and I can't find answers. And so I call up the place and I'm, I, I'm waiting for the callback. I'm excited for the callback because I'm actually interested. So Eric, the, the people that are, that are contacting you, hopefully your brand is creating and fostering the situation where your brides, they want to know. These are not cold calls. They actually want to know and hear what's going on. And, and when you focus on listening, it's very different. And so... I get it. Look, it's not a hormone every single time. You're going to get people who don't want to talk on the phone, but that doesn't mean that you should use it as an excuse to just never do it, right? Don't use it as an excuse to not do it because it sounds like an excuse to not do it and I don't buy it. Uh, and the reason I don't buy it is because, Eric, I've booked, uh, I've booked close to 60 weddings uh, this year uh, doing this. I, 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 it, I just I don't buy it, man. Um, Justin says, hey, Ben, uh, can you share more details about how you run your photo booth business? Do you include photo booth services with your wedding packages? Justin, uh, it's a good question. I don't really want to talk too much about it because, again, I'm so – I treat the photo booth service entirely as a commodity, 100% as a commodity, right? And so all I mean is like – uh, it's it's automated. I, I work with um, college students to help run the booth. Um, a lot of it's done through Tave. And so I don't even, honestly, I don't even want too many of our brides. Uh, like I don't, I look, they can do it and that's fine, but that's not really my goal um, with our brides and is having our photo booth. Um, it's just like, it's, it's bonus money. Like I don't try to ramp it up. I could get a lot more business with it, but I don't even want it. I just want it to be like, hey, it's like, it's helpful. It's just kind of tricking things in. Um, um, so I'm not going to go into it too much, man. Uh, they're a great resource, by the way, Justin, if you do want to know more information on running an effective photo booth company, uh, the photo booth supply company, Brandon Wong's the photo booth supply company. Um, 
is a uh, it's just a great source to go to. So he's got uh, a podcast that he does. Um, he's got all kinds of educational material, and um, it's amazing. Plus, he's watching. Victoria's watching. My dad just said, "Don't swear. It doesn't help your message." Thanks, pops. Uh, sometimes it just happens, man. Uh, so anyhow, um, let's keep going. We got more messages here. We got more questions. Rick says this. Keep them coming live too, as I keep going down the road here. Rick says. Um, uh, let me see what he says first writing good copy for my okay he says first off writing good copy for my about page uh, and so it's a struggle so for starters I've already messaged uh, I've already mentioned uh, writing copy uh, I have a, um, a whole podcast interview that I've done uh, and so it's Kimberly Houston she's a, a creative copywriter and you should go listen to that um, and then she says if uh, if if I can how what is this it's hard to get to uh, I'm not sure, Rick, that was a confusing part of it. I think our work, oh, here we go. Rick says this, I think our work is pretty good and it's certainly on par with other photog with with what other, I think our work is pretty good and it's certainly on par with what some others are doing for the money, okay? So he's saying that his work is, he thinks it's on par with others are doing for the money. Um, uh, some shared on social media, most don't, but I see other really bad photographers' work shared. Okay, here we go. Uh, so Rick is saying this, he's working, he's, he's taking pictures at weddings and he's saying that he thinks his work's pretty good and he, it's on par with other photographers. And then the vendors are going out and some vendors are sh not sharing his work, but they're sharing other photographers work who he doesn't think is very good. So what gives? Dude, I, I think there's more important things to worry about, to be quite honest. Um, I, <laughs> I, I see really bad photographers' work shared. Like, it's all subjective. May, like, their work might not be very good, but maybe their relationship is really strong with those vendors. Like, it, it's, all about, it's all about relationships. It's all about relationships. I think the fact that you're dwelling on um, what other people have that you don't have, and, and it's a complaint, um, I think you need to kind of change your perspective and think about um, what else can I do to give more value to the vendors that aren't sharing the work, right? And so I would I wouldn't focus on what other people are doing, man. Focus on what you're doing. And so go connect with those vendors. Um, try to meet with them. Try to provide a service to them. Maybe it's not just shooting pictures at at the wedding itself, but maybe it's actually um, uh, doing headshots of them. Maybe it's doing stuff uh, that is for a, um, a d decor, you know, a new decor or something like that. But yeah, there you go, Rick. Let's keep going. Um, Heather says. Um, I believe my prices are low at this point. Uh, at this point, I'm okay with that because I do have my corporate job to fall back on financially. My biggest challenge is leaving my corporate job. So here we go. Um, hey, Emily, what's up, girl? So uh, Heather, I get it. Your biggest challenge is leaving the corporate job um, and your current prices are too low. L look, use this opportunity um, to really thrash and hustle to build up your photography brand to get your pricing up. And so what I mean is this, you have the, you've got the safety net of your corporate job. And I understand you want to leave and that's a challenge. You have the safety net. This is the time to take risks. This is time to change everything up as fast as you possibly can. This is the time that you should be spending. Look, I, you're going to get back from the corporate job and they're going to spend, you know, 5 p.m. to 8 with your kids and with your family. And then you're going to spend 8 to 2 a.m. thrashing and trying every possible solution to get your pricing up. You're going to invest time, energy, you may even invest money to figure out how do you master this. But I would also give yourself a cap. I would give yourself a timing, a window that says, look, if you can't get your numbers to the point within a six month period or, or a 12 month period, then maybe you need to reevaluate. But you should be, this is the time to be, to be, I mean, honestly, relatively reckless, right? This is the time to be trying every possible thing and going at this as hard as possible. Because once that safety net is gone, once the corporate job is gone, um, you need to have something that you've tested and you've learned, you've tested, you've learned, you've tested, you've learned. Heather, I applaud you though, because the fastest way to actually test and well, the fastest way to keep growing is to learn from people who have gone before you. And so I'm glad you're here. Uh, that's super awesome. Um, keep at it, girl. It's awesome. Okay, cool. Let's keep going. Uh, Jeanette says, creating the fan base on social media is one of my biggest struggles. I've stopped tagging pics on Instagram because people have stolen images. I've since started putting watermarks on images, uh, uh, posted to Instagram, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So Jeanette, um, what's happening here is, uh, 
your your struggle is creating a fan base on social and yet you've stopped posting pictures on Instagram. You stopped tagging pictures on Instagram. And not only that, but you started watermarking things. And you guys know what I'm talking about. The photographer out there who puts the big watermark across their image. Um, this is a this is a scarcity mindset. This is a fear-based mindset. And it's one that when you try to build your business um, it, with fear of like, what happens when someone takes my picture on Instagram? What happens if the watermark isn't on it? What happens if they edit the picture? What happens if they download it, re-edit it, and then post it back up? It's all fear. It's all fear. It's all fear. And you won't be able to grow your business. You can't be doing everything in fear. And so like, I think you need to like accept it. Like it's weird and it, it's 2017 when you put stuff online, like sometimes people may take it. Who cares? Honestly, who cares? I like, I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you do. If you are a, someone, a photographer who's licensing your work, um, you know, for commercial use, then maybe you should care, right? I totally get that. But other than that, I've we've had people steal our work, and I just kind of like chuckle, and then I just move on, and I keep getting shit done, right? Um, I've got more important things to worry about, and you limit yourself when you start saying, ah, if I put something out there, someone might take it. I better put a big watermark. I better put a copyright uh, under my Instagram handle for it. And so, um, Jen, I just want to encourage you to. To, it's okay. Like just to, mm, keep, you have to push past that fear, that fear mindset and, and keep putting yourself out there and keep putting your work out there. Okay, cool. Let's keep going. Um, Katie says, Hey Ben, uh, I've got a wedding coming up and I wanted to know the best lighting setup. Ooh, lighting questions. I love technical stuff. Okay. I've got a wedding coming up and I wanted to know the best lighting setup for using the flash in an umbrella. Ah, for using a flash in an umbrella that the couple is holding. How do I set that up? Katie, there's a number of uh, ways that you could do this. My guess is you're, from the way that you described it, you're kind of describing a light that's lighting up the inside of the umbrella. Um, and so, or you could be talking about the whole backlit thing, like a rain shot. Maybe we'll talk about the rain shot thing. So here's the deal when dealing with off camera lighting, especially let's talk about just about like backlit shots, whether you're holding an umbrella or not, six feet back, the light should be at the, the groom's head height, which is roughly gonna be around that six feet head height. It should be positioned so that way when through, you're looking through the lens, uh, it's hidden behind the groom's head. That way the girl doesn't have quite as much of that, that halo of hair all around her. Um, and you wanna put a snoot on it or a grid. I think a grid is a little bit better. A snoot can sometimes restrict it too much. A grid is gonna keep that light off the ground and it's gonna keep it focused uh, on the subject a little bit more. Um, and you'll see the difference because the backlit shots where I'm talking about where the light hits the ground, the floor has this like V of light that just is like this blue light from the blue, um, from the blue uh, flash. So anyhow, uh, you're gonna do that. Uh, and then as far as you know, tech terms, you could go ahead and go like TTL on this thing, but I don't do TTL. I think uh, TTL sets you up to encounter more um, failure experiences. And so um, I would go manual and I would put your shutter speed at 200. I would then put your aperture where you want it. Um, maybe let's say F2 and I would keep your flash off and then I would dial your ISO up until you have a scene that is um, however dark you want it to be, one stop underexposed, two stops under, it sounds like you want it to be darker with the umbrella lit up, so two, two or three stops underexposed, right? Then you turn your flash on, I put it on manual at 130 second power, take a picture, look at it, does it look good? Cool, does it not, is it, is it too dark? Then you dial your flash up, is it, too, uh, is it too bright? Then you dial your flash down, so there you go. It's a, it's a tricky thing to answer a technical question like lighting uh, uh, in this type of setting. Um, I've got a whole bunch of articles on that, by the way, Katie, in regards to on the uh, on the blog in regards to lighting setups that will dial in exactly how you can do this. And so I'll try to post that below in the comments for you. Okay, um, Sarah says, advertising, I offer photo and video and use multiple websites to advertise, WeddingWire, Craigslist, Gigmasters. Is there a better site? I've only booked two weddings so far this year. Let's see here. But inquiries have been picking up. How do you follow up with inquiries? Okay, um, so Sarah, look, um, a lot of this stuff in regards to some of these niche sites, right? some of the advertising niche sites that you're talking about with Wedding Wire, Craigslist is, is broad, Geekmasters is broad. Um, in terms of, is there a better site? Look, I think um, with Craigslist and Geekmasters, you're gonna be targeting, um, these are great when you're very first starting out, but you're gonna be targeting, attracting a budget uh, client, right? You're gonna be targeting a budget ride, and that's fine. 
if you can compete on that price and that's what you want to do, that's great. It's a great way to get, look, if you got no clients, if you got nothing going on, then do it. Okay. Um, but like wedding wire is already going to be a better option than let's say Craigslist, generally speaking. But in terms of like wedding wire or the knots, that's another one you didn't mention the knot. It's very, um, it's going to be very, uh, location driven. Uh, and so certain locations do better with certain, um, niche sites than others. Right. For even example, Yelp, Yelp's another one that you didn't, um, kind of bring up here, but Yelp is something that in the Midwest and Ohio, people don't use Yelp for wedding photography. But then when you start hopping over to uh, maybe towards the West Coast, you look at California, Yelp is one of the number one ways that people are actually looking to see who's a good wedding photographer. And so you have to understand the market, the local market that you're in uh, to really get what's going on. Steve, what's up, my man? Good to see you. Uh, Steve, Steve, you're so crazy. I love what you're doing uh, with uh, – uh, with rooted. Anyhow, um, she then says this, Sarah says, um, but inquiries when picking up, how do you follow up with inquiries? Um, Sarah, when an inquiry hits our inbox, we are reaching out over the phone to actually call and connect with them. Um, there's a whole bunch of resources I've put out in the past other live videos, uh, that really dive into this. Steve, I love what you're doing. Steve, I actually mentioned you uh, on this, uh, on Six Figure Live a couple days ago. You guys, Steve just uh, hopped in here and I'm gonna put him on the spot because I think what he's doing is incredible. Look, a lot of times I'm getting questions about how do I get inquiries? How do I get business going? How do I generate word of mouth campaign? How do I get started when I don't have anybody to photograph? How do I build my portfolio, right? What Steve's done, he's got a commercial videography company uh, and I believe it's called Rooted. And what Steve's done is he's created this challenge. He's put it out there into the universe. He said, in 30 days, I'm going to tell 30 stories. I'm going to tell 30 commercial video stories for businesses, one a day for 30 days. That's insane, but it's so incredible. I love the fact that he's put it out there. It's created a buzz and he's making it happen. Like No matter what happens, every single day, there's going to be a story to be told. Like as a, as a portrait photographer, you could do 30 days of 30 portraits and every single day you're going to photograph another couple. And that may mean you're giving away sessions. That may mean you're going to the, to the local park and you're talking to people. That may mean you're reaching out to family or friends, but you're making work happen, right? You're causing your own success. You're causing and creating your own luck and you're building your portfolio. You're generating that buzz and that word of mouth um, and it's hustle and it's work and it's time, but it's worth it. I freaking love it. Steve, it's so cool that you're doing that. Jackie's here. What's up, Jackie? Um, okay, let's see, Quinn. I'm gonna answer one more question uh, in the inbox. I still got some money for you guys. And then I got, I'll got i answer one more live for you guys. Um, okay, cool. Let's keep going. I'll just go right off the top here. Um, this one is, I'm having problems getting clients booked due to lack of portfolio. I think I just answered this question. I have, I've messaged photographers about second or third shooting, but no one seems to be needing one. Look, don't wait to mess. Don't wait to second shoot. So I just got on the phone call. Don't wait to second shoot a wedding. Don't wait to third shoot a wedding. Go and like go and start shooting anyone. Uh, when I very first started, I grabbed my sister along. I was like, "Hey, there's this like house. Let's go like put a dress on. I'm gonna go photograph you there, right? Um, do do sessions with your friends, with your friends, your family. Do what I just talked about with Steve, where you're just creating a, a challenge for yourself. Thirty days. 30 portraits, you're going to make it happen. Um, you don't have to wait. The second thing is this, if you're going to start reaching out to, to people to second shoot or third shoot, you have to provide value because right now when you say, Hey, so-and-so, I wanted to see if I could second shoot for you. All they hear is, Hey, so-and-so, I wanted to see how I could learn all of your ways and then start my own successful business and destroy you right? You have to provide more value than just, can I second shoot? Can I learn? The audacity that I've had with people who have messaged me and been like, hey, Ben, I'd like to, um, I'd like to come and learn from you from a day. Um, I'm looking forward to your prompt response. I'm like, okay. Like, first off, like, they just presume so many things. And to end it by saying, like, I'm looking forward to your prompt response. Like, I've got all the time in the day to focus on this. You have to provide value to people ahead of time. And so what else are you going to be able to do? What else are you going to be able to do to position yourself um, as someone that that they could actually use? Uh, a great example of this um, is a second shooter that has now become someone that we've we're working so closely with, Chalen. She even reached out and she said, "I'm not like I'm I'm trying to figure out this whole photography thing, but uh, I don't have a portfolio. Uh, I don't want anything. You don't have to pay me. I want to just commit to be able to work harder than any other person. You'll never have to." Um, like it, if you need a lens, I will, I promise you, I'll be, I will run to that, to get that lens. Like I will be your right hand assistant with whatever you need. Um, 
And it was a different positioning. It was subtle. It was different, but it was so much better than just the person who was like, hey, I want to learn from you uh, for a season. Uh, let me know. Um, Jackie says, I love your motivation as enthusiasm, Ben. Proud of you. Thanks, girl. Appreciate you, Jackie. All right. Um, there wasn't another live question, so I'm just going to uh, to just go ahead and, and do another one that hit the inbox. And then I think I'm going to get outside and, and play with my daughter for a little bit today. Um, all right. Here we go. Uh, this came from Nate. Nate says, I'm trying to learn as much as I can and grow to be a successful wedding photographer while at the same time being a full-time student. I shoot whenever I get the chance and I spend the, I spend in the wee hours of the night watching photography videos. I just wish I had more time. I can't wait to see where photography takes me, but in the meantime, I'm just trying to learn as much as I can, so hopefully I can start full-time after college. What else can I do? Dude, if you're already just shooting everything possible and you're already spending all the time in the wee hours of the night, I mean, at this point, it's, um, if, like, if you want to keep getting better, if you want to keep finessing down, I actually just did a video over the last couple of days of some of the things that we do it's just becoming even more efficient on that note right and so like um god it's I, i've taken facebook off my phone it's like there's this like the little things like that i think one of the best things you can do is yes learn online yes take in materials um but nate uh one of the things that you can do is and, I, and i'm saying this clearly as someone who is an educator and has something to offer right now i've got nothing for sale nate and so don't mess with me to try to buy something but honestly one of the best hacks that you can do is rather than just watching the free videos and rather than just um you know taking in all the free posts like to you'll take yourself more seriously and you'll put more time more energy more care more into it when um you uh when you actually invest when you actually when you actually invest into it right the times that i've look actually on this note uh i'm trying to uh to learn to get better at presenting from the stage right i literally I, there's all kinds of so many resources so many books so many online courses so many youtube videos on how to present better from the stage uh, and I can do that and I, I have done that, but I also that went and I bought a course. I bought a, uh, I bought a mentoring coaching session with someone because I, I want to really take it seriously. I want to kind of hack my brain to make sure that I get use out of it. Right. Because at this point I put money into it. I get, I better get a return, uh, from it. So, uh, Nate, I love what you're doing, man. So, so much props. Keep it up. Uh, Eric says, hurry. I got to go. Uh, I got to go put the drone up in the air and get this current job completed so I can get back to the studio. So wait, hurry to finish up. Um, okay. Uh, Angela says, what is the average? Oh, gotcha. What is the average flying speed of a laden sparrow? And then I get the comment, Eric. Um, great Monty Python reference. I love it, Eric. <laughs> Angela. It's fantastic. Uh, Eric, I can't help you. Go watch Monty Python, Eric. Um, and maybe the answer's there. I think I'm trying to remember. Is the answer in... Monty Python? I don't know. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Um, the confidence video is going to go for, out for you guys uh, next uh, next week sometime, I believe. Um, other than that, there's still a bunch more questions I did not get a chance to answer, and so I'll keep answering for you guys as, uh, as I get time. But thanks again. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for asking the questions. I appreciate you. 11 meters per second, Angela. I appreciate you guys. Um, work hard. Uh, play hard. Treat, your, treat yourself. Uh, we'll see you guys Monday. Cheers.